Oh, Venus, Italy's treasure, the city that magically floats on water, home to the Venus Carnival, the masks, the costumes, the gondolas, and the stripped t-shirts. These are all things that come to mind when thinking about the land of beauty and culture. But have you ever wondered how you actually spend your time there? Are the floating houses all that you can admire? Well, if you have considered visiting Venus before you were not sure whether it's worth it or not, continue watching this video. By the end of it, we guarantee you will be looking up cheap flights to Italy straight away. Now, before we get into some specific landmarks and sightseeing you can do, let's have a look at some overall facts we know about Venus. In Italian, this beautiful city is referred as Venezia, since residents that went by the name of Veneti lived in the area back in the 10th century BC. Venezia is located in the northeast side of the country and stands on the waters of the Adriatic Sea which is why it has previously been known as the Queen of Adriatic. Venus is technically made up of 114 islands, which are connected with bridges as many as 400 in total. This archipelago hosts up to 5 million tourists per year, and after this video, you could become one of them. Hopefully by now, you have a better understanding of the city we will be talking about, so make sure to stick around. As we delve into the top 5 places you can visit when in Venezia. Rialto Bridge As mentioned earlier, you'll be able to find up to 400 bridges in the whole of Venice. Some of them are larger and more special, some are less important and look like regular bridges. However, there is one bridge you cannot and should not miss when visiting Venus. It is the Rialto Bridge, a pedestrian bridge which is approximately 30 meters long and 20 meters wide. So not too grandiose, but its design sure is. It is named so since it was built in order to get to the Rialto market, the heart of the city which is popular for the fresh fish, seafood and fruits and vegetables it offers. The Rialto was constructed over the span of three years from 1588 to 1591 using white stone. However, it was not always the elegant and graceful bridge that stands today. In its place were multiple bridges before, such as the Pontoon Bridge, built in the 12th century, which was later, in the 13th century, replaced by a bridge made out of wood. The later would also collapse in the 16th century, which is when they decided to build the Rialto the way we know it today. This white arc bridge crosses the Grand Canal, which we will talk more about very soon. It connects Venetian districts, San Marco and San Polo. You can not only climb these steps up to the center of the bridge, appreciate the incredible views of the water and enjoy the warm sun of Italy, but you can also dine just next to it and admire the bridge with a slice of pizza in your hand. Or why not take a gondola ride and sail under it? As you cross the Rialto, you also have the chance to do some shopping, as the bridge is home to various different types of stores on each side. Square of San Marco Piazza San Marco Now let's take a walk on land for a bit and look at Piazza San Marco, which is usually referred to as the Square of San Marco by tourists and travelers. This is a huge piazza, or square, that is surrounded by incredible Italian architecture from all sides. One of the main sites of ever remains, the St. Marx's Basilica, which was first built in the 9th century, but experienced slight changes over the years. Regardless, the main Italo-Byzantine and Gothic style has not been altered. The arches, the marble, the bronze oars installations, its heights and more than 500 columns take you on an unexpected journey that will completely stun you. Alongside this extraordinary basilica is the Procrete Vieche. Built in a Renaissance style in the mid-1500 by architects named Pietro Bon and Juan Calestro. The beautiful arches, columns and symmetrical windows will take your breath away. 
And then we have the bell tower known as San Marcos Campanile or El Paron de Casa, which translates to the master of the house. It is over 98 meters high and is known to be the tallest building in the whole of Venice. But it had to go through reconstruction after having collapsed in the early 1900s. If you'd like to climb it, it won't collapse again. It's fixed now. But if you would like to, you can look over Venice and fully take in the whole city from above. This is also the spot that is thought to have been utilized by Galileo Galilei as an observatory at the beginning of the 17th century. Apart from enjoying the views and feeding the birds when in Piazza San Marco, you can also stop for lunch or plan a romantic dinner at night, as this landmark is stunning in the sun as well as in the dark of the night. Remember, St. Mark's also hosts the Venetian Carnival annually, so you could plan your trip according to the carnival celebrations. Grand Canal Now let's hop back into our gondolas, led by amazing guides dressed in similar strip tops that add to the overall classic Italian atmosphere. The Grand Canal is one of the most significant and famous channels of Venus. It is a 3.8 km road which forms a S shape as it connects the Santa Lucia area to San Marco. It is also 5 meters deep, so sit tight on your gondola, but still make sure to enjoy the incredible scenery upon you. This is one of the most famous roads travelers take in order to admire Venus from the water. You go past many cathedrals, palaces, museums and luxurious buildings as well as bridges, such as the Bridge of Sykes and the Rialto which we already agree is incredibly magical. When booking your gondola, you have a choice between a shorter one-hour ride or a longer two-hour tour to explore Venus from the Grand Canal. If you don't have much time to spend in Venus, we recommend you do make some time. But if you are on a tight schedule, be sure to book yourself a Grand Canal tour in order to see landmarks such as the St. Mark's Basilica. Doge's Palace, the Basilica of Santa Maria della Salute, the Teatro La Fenice and the Peggy Guggenheim Museum alongside many other classics of Venezia all from one gondola ride. Full of colors, flowers and blue waters, the Grand Canal is a must-see in Italy. St. Mark's Basilica Let's get back on Earth and leave the water again for just a little bit. We have already touched upon the breathtaking St. Mark's Basilica, but let's take a closer look at its architectural details and history. As we already know, this blissful basilica was constructed in the year of 828 and is named after St. Mark, who is thought to have personally traveled to Venice and brought religion to the city. The building itself burnt down a couple of times before it was reconstructed in the year of 1063 and has not undergone major changes since, meaning it was quite similar to the basilica you see now. The elaborate and overwhelmingly beautiful architectural choices made for the basilica are the influenced by italo byzantine and Gothic styles. St. Mark's is home to the famous statue, the Portrait of the Four Tetrarchs, which represents the four rulers of the Tetrarchy that had been established in Venice. It is thought that it was stolen from Constantinople when the Fourth Crusade started, an expedition led by Pope Innocent III. And that is not all. The iconic four bronze horses installed on the basilica were also found during the expedition as well as other details like the Madonna Nicopia, the relics, physical remains of saints, and much more. Also, you might not know that the symbol of Venus which is a lion with wings installed at the center of Basilica, was St. Mark's symbol and will later on become the symbol of Venus too. Chiesa di San Giorgio Maggiore And for our final destination, we have Chiesa di San Giorgio Maggiore or St. George's Church when translated to English. It is a spectacular Catholic church located on the shore of beautiful Venetian waters 
creating a magical sight from all perspectives. This Benediction church was built by the great Andrea Palladio, a well-known Renaissance architect who designed this iconic church in the late 1560s but was only completed in the year of 1610. Similarly to many other architectural landmarks, there used to be a different church in the place of Giorgio Maggiore which was unfortunately destroyed after an earthquake. Before the version we know today was finalized, the bell tower we mentioned called Campanile was installed in 1467. However, after it collapsed in 1791, it had to go through restoration, after which it has remained the same until today. Not only is the exterior design of the church fascinating, but we also suggest taking a look on the inside if you have time. Chiesa di San Giorgio Maggiore is home to many important artwork by artists like Jacopo Bassano, Leandro Bassano, Sebastiano Ricci, and Tintoretto. You might even recognize it in Claude de Monte's painting called San Giorgio Maggiore at Dusk, which he created in the early 20th century. This white marble church, a tall bell tower and Venetian blue waters come together in a mystical, almost fairy-like way that will not leave you emotionless. When visiting Venetia, it is impossible to miss San Giorgio's church. So, this is our list of the top 5 places to visit when you are traveling through Venice. Are you packing your suitcase already? We don't blame you. The city of Venezia is bound to leave you speechless and completely in love with Italy. The romantic gondola rides, delicious dinners and extraordinary architecture is something you have to experience at least once in your life. So, give yourself the gift of Italy and discover the cultural city that has been floating on water for decades. If you enjoyed learning about the top 5 places you can visit in Venice, then make sure to check out our other videos about traveling around Italy. Let us know which landmark you are most excited to explore and why. And look out for those pickpocketers. Thank you for watching. Until next time.